Today we'll be testing a genuine 9 amp hour battery from Ryobi versus let's just say a 9 amp hour eBay special. I plan to put the two head to head and work out value for money. The knockoff battery come in at $72 and the genuine Ryobi battery at $299. If I mathed right, that's a 76% price difference. The Ryobi comes with a 3 year manufacturer's warranty and the knockoff was advertised with a massive 5 year warranty. So what I was thinking of was I've got a fan and a light, LED light. So they're both very low drain devices, but it'll give us a good indication of how much capacity each battery has and how long they last. Take a look at the first one. Now this one, like I said, is from eBay and this is exactly how it come. I have opened it up before, just to have a quick look. And there we are. No regulations broken there, I don't think and we're unpacked. So it's a lithium battery. Looks like it's coming well, two thirds charged. Uh, there's nothing special about it. Oh, here we go underneath. We got P108 battery, 18 volt. Now it is claiming 900 milliamp hours. We're gonna test that. 162 watt hours. Uh, do not disassemble. That's problematic. Let's grab a screwdriver. Before we get into opening up that one, we've got the TH torque bit there. We can get that one open. Let's have a quick look at this one. Packaging already seems to be a lot better. So we've got a box inside of a box. Inside of a heavy duty bag. Some instructions in the bottom. So already you can see the difference in quality. So that's a nice heavy bag. So that's probably any static and get into that one. There we are. Let's take a look at them side by side. So side by side they look pretty close. Uh, the Rayobi battery was shipped with almost no charge. Well, look at that. Whereas this one's got three bars, it's only got one bar. Alright, let's grab a multimeter and have a look at what the shipping voltages were. It says 18.23 volts. And this one was 16.55 volts. Now I'm not really sure what the legal voltage is that they're going to be shipped in, but that's what they were. Now let's have a quick look at how much they weigh. Now for reference, we've got a little uh, scale. We'll put it to grams because Australia. And have a look. So we've got a two amp hour battery just for reference. That is 428 grams. And we've got the four amp hour battery. So that's 722 grams. And we go the lithium battery and it's uh, 1,080 grams on that one, 38 ounces and 2.38 pounds. And the Ryobi one 9 amp hour battery and that is a 1,186 grams, 41 ounces and 2.615 pounds. I'm not even surprised at the two weight differences between these because I'm not expecting this to be anything like it was claimed to be. So let's get these two batteries open, break the warranty seal and have a look what we've got inside. On the lithium battery, we've got one, two, three, four T8 screwdriver bits and then one on the top there. Five screws removed. Now in theory, this should just pop off. And that was very easy. Slide straight off. We'll see if we can get the battery out of there. Have a look what cells we've got. We've got to pull these tabs out. A little bit of a pull. Drop them out of there. And then hopefully, this is only 18 volts, so we should be right. There we are, a bit of a shake upside down. And she slid out. And all the parts fell out. I don't think I'll be using this one again anyway. That's stuck to the side. Okay, let's throw all those parts to the side and have a quick look at this battery. Now I'm no battery management designer or anything like that, but it'll be good to compare the two. So we've got a bunch of cells there. We can't see what those cells are easily. Uh, what I can see instantly is some very poor welds. That's amateur hour. It's almost blowing through, so that weld on that side will be almost ineffective. We've also got some rather thin 
nickel strip that would be less than I'd say 0.1 of a millimeter um, there's nothing much else I can go on unfortunately I can't see any of those batteries to get them out and have a look what make and model they are if you would like a video on that later on let me know and I'll pull this battery apart uh, completely disassemble it and have a look at those cells but that's not the purpose of this particular video let's just have a quick look and see how balanced all these cells are in this battery so we've got positive on this side negative so 3.65 3.65, 3.65, 3.64, and then 3.65. My impression of this first battery without testing it, I'm not at all impressed with the spot welds or the quality of them, or even the amount of them, and that the thickness of that nickel strip, I don't think that's anywhere near adequate for a nine amp hour battery. So let's continue on and have a look at this other battery. So the same disassembly for this battery, we've got one, two, three, four screws there, and the screw on the top, now the genuine Ryobi battery uses a security Torx bit and it's a T10, not a T8. And you can see the security Torx bit has a little hole on the end of it. So it actually locates in the screw properly and then you can undo it. Using a normal one, you can't actually get the screwdriver in far enough and it sort of just teeters around on the top and we'll probably end up stripping it out. The Ryobi battery also has this little bung here. There we go. Just use a pick to grab out that little warranty seal, I guess you'd say, out of the battery. So that pops out without too much effort, but they're gonna know you've been here. Should just slip straight up again. Now I'm no engineer, I can only go on looks of these. Uh, we've got the Ryobi 1 battery here and then the, the knockoff battery here. This board is much less heavily populated with components. We've also got some really poor connections here with bus bars that just go along the board. Uh, the wires are much smaller in size. And this one's got the wires running around the side for the balance leads, whereas this one's got some nice heavy nickel strip. We'll have a look at the nickel strip on that a little bit later. We turn that one around, so we've got a similar sort of an orientation. And we've got the nice big heavy um, nickel strip there, and it's almost probably 20% wider than the nickel strip here. And it actually looks thicker from here. I'll open the battery in a second, we'll have a look at that. Again at the back, it just looks so much less substantial. This has got nickel strip all the way up to the actual terminals. This has got just a PCB. We'll pop this one out and have a look. A Ryobi. Now this is the first time I've done it. So, okay, so that one just pulls straight out much like the, the knockoff. Have a look at the two differences there. Genuine versus fake. They're a lot, that's a lot lighter. You can feel that it's got a decent amount of strength to it where that one is just sort of feels a bit lackluster. That one out. Pull straight out. Now we'll see if we can get the actual battery out. I can't lift it out. Ugh. That's less than ideal. On the ground. But Ryobi are built to last right, so we'll have a look and hopefully we haven't killed it. Ah, uh, we've still got lights. Means she still works. Radio. We'll get that one in post edit. Notes from the editing desk. Is that actually a fuse on the Ryobi battery as well? I don't think I've ever seen that. It does appear to be a fuse. What do you reckon? Okay, so getting that one out was a little bit harder. Uh, it seemed to st stick in there really well. And I shook it a little bit hard and landed on the ground. Fairly hard too, I might add, but... I'll regret that later, no doubt. We'll put those parts over there, get them out of the way. Let's have a look at the side. And instantly, look at those nickel plates on the side of that. Compared to our stock battery. So we've got some really solid nickel plate with some really strong looking welds there on the genuine battery. And compare that to this. Looks a little bit ordinary, doesn't it? really does prove you get what you pay for. 
Okay, I think that's enough pulling it down. We've confirmed that that is very average build quality compared to the Ryobi. Let's get them back together and let's put them on the charger, charge them up, and then run some tests. Now I'm confident that it's just up in there, but I can't remember and I haven't rewind the video, so just gonna do a continuity check on that. So that's non-conductive. Right, yeah, must go there. I must say, the build quality of this, it feels amazing. And five screws back in again. We'll get that on charge before we charge it up. We'll just clip that in. And it turns on straight away. It's nice to know that I didn't kill it by dropping it. Oh yeah, we'll get that on charge. And we've got the larger 55 watt one. Set it all on charge. Oh yeah, back together. It just, you push it in, and it, I mean it locks in there, but it's not this satisfying thud when you put it in. It's just not the same. I right, turn it on, fan works, pushes air, as you would expect. All right, let's get this one charged up so we can run a discharge test. What the? See, even that's... Look at that for a fit. You can see a gap all the way around there. Doesn't even, doesn't even fit on there properly. It does charge, but even a good thud, it doesn't fit properly. Let's have a quick look at this one. Look at that, perfect fitment. Absolutely perfect. And it's it's on this one it's just missing something perhaps that something's quality so we've got the batteries out of the charge now they've been rested for a full 24 hours after I finished charging them just so they settle down and they're sort of at the same level let's just grab the multimeter and do a quick voltage check of each one this one's slightly higher voltage at 20.76 volts. And this one is 20.27 volts. So the Ryobi one is slightly lower charge than this one, but we're just gonna have to run with it and see what comes of it. Each in one. So we got that one in the fan. Make sure the fan's turned off. So plug that in. I am still not impressed with the way that plugs in. It's just that doesn't inspire any confidence, especially if it was in a power tool and you were carrying it around. I reckon it would fall out. And then into the light. Right, yeah, we're going to run the light with uh, all lamps on. So we'll hook that on high. You're probably not going to hear me, so I'll do this one first. That's on high. Where is it? And that one on high. We'll set it at 12 o'clock again, and I'll see you when that's done. And a few days later, we have some results and they aren't what I expected. With a price difference of 76% between the two batteries, Ryobi being $299 versus $72 for the knockoff, I would have expected to see a massive difference in run times, but this wasn't the case. For the little shop fan, the Ryobi run for 18 hours and 22 minutes, and the knockoff run for 12 hours and 45 minutes. That's only a 31% difference in run times. For the LED light, we had a similar result. The light run for 13 hours with the Ryobi battery and 9 hours and 23 minutes with the knockoff battery. That was only a 29% difference in run times. Based on that amount of information alone, you'd say the knockoff battery was great value for money, but that's not even close to the whole story. Knockoff, as we saw earlier, is poorly constructed, is lighter, is most likely lying about its capacity, 
doesn't really fit properly and could fall out of your tool very easily. And the knockoff will likely have a lot less cycles before it fails. Well, at least I presume it'll have a lot less cycles before it fails. Now, on paper, I'm actually impressed with how that performs for the price. Would I buy one? Absolutely not. I know better, right? I'm, I started making this video about a month ago, so I've had lots of time to actually use both batteries. And this one works really, really well in the, um, in the light and in the fan. But anything else I use it in, say the leaf blower, now it's impossible to get on camera. But the leaf blower, when I put this one in, it, you, you can hear the motor. The motor's got more power. It's got more blowing power. It works a lot better for a lot longer. And this one, it just, it just, it just feels like a four amp hour battery. It doesn't have the power behind it. And additionally, that one has fallen out of the leaf blower, eh, maybe twice. Now I turn it upside down to put it on the ground. So when you, when you stand it up, it sort of stands on the battery. And every time I've done that, it's just the battery's fallen out. And that's probably a combination of the weight and the poor clips. But in the, in the lights and stuff, it does work. So it makes it difficult. So it's now it's my job to prove that that is a bad investment versus that one. So I'm gonna hook up the iCharger X6. I'm gonna solder in some balance leads and I'm gonna do 100 charge and discharge cycles on this battery. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, smash that hit like button and the subscribe button if you wanna see that video. Uh, that's probably gonna take me, oh, good 10 weeks to actually do that video because I'll probably get one or maybe two cycles a day. But stay tuned for that. And I hope you learned something I certainly did. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.